Good morning and welcome to St Alphage Sea Salter's Sunday service for the 14th of March. My name is Paulette, I'm the vicar here. You are very warmly welcome wherever you are watching from. It's the fourth Sunday of Lent and it's also Mothering Sunday. And we know that Mothering Sunday for some um, conjures up feelings of great blessing and warmth and is a very positive thing. But for others, it can be painful and complicated depending on our own experiences. So a little bit later on in the service, I will be inviting you to join me in lighting a candle and offering all of that up to God. So we will make space for that in our service. But in the meantime, we are continuing with our theme of prayer for Lent. And our theme particularly today is intercession. And again, later on in our service, Toby will be speaking to us about that. There's a sentence in the, star, the Psalms, Psalm 127, where it says, unless the Lord builds the house, the labourers work in vain. So all that we're about and all that we do in church at Seasalter recognises that it is God who builds us and grows us and brings about the transformation that we long for in ourselves and in the world. And so with that in mind, we invite the Holy Spirit now to come and be with us and shape this time of worship and work in our hearts and our minds as we gather here. So we say together, be with us, Spirit of God. Nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your saving power. Speak in us, wisdom of God. Bring strength, healing and peace. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us.
What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. We often think about Lent as being a time when we particularly focus on our sinfulness. And I suppose to a degree we do. But really what we're focusing on is God's relentless desire to rescue us from the worst of ourselves. And so when we come in confession to God, we're offering up those things that we know that we do that damage ourselves and one another and giving the Holy Spirit the opportunity to search our hearts and bring those things to light so that we can be set free from them, so that we can turn around and start again, start afresh and be released from the things that hold us back and that hurt and harm. So in a time of quiet now, let's lift up our hearts to God and invite the Holy Spirit to come and show us the things that we need to see before we make our prayer of confession. Using the responses on the screen, we say, Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today I'm doing two readings from the Old Testament and I'm using the NIV version. The first reading is 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. The second reading is taken from Genesis, chapter 18, verses 22 to 33. So that's Genesis, chapter 18, verses 22 to 33. The men turned away and went towards Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again. 
Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is less, five less than fifty? Will you destroy the whole city for the lack of five people? If I find forty-five there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again he spoke to him, What if only forty are found there? He said, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only thirty can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. Abraham said, Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only twenty can be found there? He said, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only ten can be found there? He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left, and Abraham returned home. Good morning, church. Uh, as we continue in our preaching series on prayer, today we'll be looking at intercession as a form of prayer. So, let us pray. Father, we ask you this morning to speak to us, your children. Help us not only to be the hearers of your word, but to do, be the doers of your word. Speak through me, Holy Spirit. I surrender my will, my emotions, my intellect before you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. So, church, what is intercession? Now, intercession is the act of saying a prayer on behalf of a friend. Or it could mean the act of gossiping to God about a friend. That means you're telling God about your friend. From our first reading and second reading, we experience a first hand call from God calling his people to pray or to intercede on behalf of the land which he which God has given to them. As we continue interceding on behalf, we are doing the will of God. So the expression, let us pray, you could also say what aspect of the prayer is let us intercede. So intercession has the ability to expose us in our prejudice in a few other forms that other prayers do. But it, it does three positive things. Number one, intercession helps us to reflect on the concern and the knowledge of an intercessor. Number two, it enables us to listen and to be hearing the petition to identify with those who are concerned. Number three, it helps us to hear to focus on where God may be calling us as a co-laborers when we pray. So intercession is relational. That means you are communicating with God. It gives you an assurance that you have a relationship with God who is called our Father who is also longing to respond with his mercy to horse his people. To take for example, Jesus making intercession was an intimate relationship with God, which when he approached God, he was not approaching him as a judge, but he was approaching him as a father. This is reflected in our Bible reading. If my people, this shows that we, his people, have a relationship with him. Abraham interceded with God 
in a relationship or friendship manner and pleaded so that he could God he could hold the hand of God over some certain issues. So in this Lent season, we are all called to intercede on behalf of our world, on behalf of our nation, on behalf of our community, over the pandemic that is going around, on behalf of our frontline workers, on behalf of our schools, on behalf of our education sector. Also, it is for any concern we have, we are called to intercede. Do you know that we clapping every Thursday is an act of interceding? Because we are telling God, thank you for watching over our frontline workers. So, intercession, therefore, from start to finish, is the act of God. And intercession is the heartbeat of God. Because intercession is a way of a loving others in our prayers. A way of loving others in our prayers. So to pray in accordance with God's kingdom is praying in the name of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Which in its form, this means that the kinds of intercession he would like will be the kind of intercession he wants us to do. You might also be wondering, Jesus prayed. Praying and interceding formed the nature and the character of who God is. The word of God, abide in me, is an all-inclusive condition for an effective intercession. So, in the scripture we read, we saw two conditions to blessing. One, if we will humble ourselves. Humbling ourselves is coming before the Lord. And also, if we will pray, if we will intercede and ask God. And also, number three, if we will seek the face of God. That is where true repentance com comes in. Now you might wonder who is called to intercede or who is an intercessor. Everyone is called to be an intercessor. Everyone is called to pray. Prayer is not just limited to some few people. Can I give you? If you want to know that you are called as an intercessor, I'll give you eight qualities of an intercessor. Number one, an intercessor, they are God-centered, not self-centered. That means you always want to feel the heartbeat of God. Number two, they love God and his people. If you love people, if you are a people's man or a people's woman or a people's people that means you are called to stand in the gap i can also tell you that intercession is standing in the gap also the three qualities or the third qualities of an intercessor is that an intercessor are diligent they are diligent people they are always there anytime come rain come sunshine Number four, they are selfless. They pray for people. They pray on behalf of people on behalf of people before they even pray. Remember their needs. That's the quality of an intercessor. Number four, they are compassionate. Oh, they love people. They have the heartbeat of God. They carry other people's pain. If you carry other people's pain, you are called to intercede. You are called to intercede. Also, they are bold people. Anywhere, they are fearless. They want to go there. They want to alleviate either poverty. They want to alleviate pain. They want to relieve people of their pain. Number seven. 
they know the word of God and they know God. They always want to know what is God saying concerning an issue. Number eight, the last one. They always prevail in prayer even when they are mocked. They stand in the place of prayer. They keep standing. They keep persevering no matter what it is. So that is the form of intercession that God is calling everybody to and which we are all. So today, if you have not been praying or you say, oh, I'm not an intercessor. No, 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 no. God is calling you to that or God is saying, this is what I want you to do. So I will employ you. Let's keep praying. Let's keep believing God. And remember, as an intercessor or as one who intercede, keep it simple, keep it real, and keep it uh, up. Thank you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace the lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you lord turn his face toward you and give you peace oh. shine upon you and be gracious to you lord turn his face toward you and give you peace oh. children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and you're going, and you're weeping and rejoicing. He's for you, 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 he's for you. We join together in saying the words of the Creed. We believe in God the Father, with whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. 
We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's prayers will have the response, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we remember on this Mothering Sunday those people in our lives who are a mother to us, whether that's physically or whether they are spiritual mothers, we are so grateful. Lord, we do recognise as well that although it's a joyful day for many, it is also not always the easiest day either. Lord, we pray for those who struggle on a day like today. Lord, may your comfort and peace be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we lift up the COVID uh, pandemic situation to you now, Lord. Uh, it dominates our news headlines. Uh, in many ways, it dominates our lives. But we do thank you, Lord, for uh, the breakthrough in vaccines that we've had. Um, and that there is this roadmap uh, back to normality, Lord, whatever that will look like. And we thank you that you have already um, gone before all of this, that you know what that looks like. Uh, and we ask that you would help us to put our trust in you. Um, with the future um, and what plans may be ahead. Um, we do thank you, Lord, that our school children have had their first week back at school this week um, and we lift up um, all those people working in schools, uh, particularly those head teachers and leadership teams who are making those decisions, sometimes changing on a daily basis. We pray that you would give them all that they need in this time um, as they begin that work of really rebuilding community um, and settling those children back into school. Lord, would you draw close to them in this tricky season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we also lift to you the people within our community and across this town who are really struggling because of the latest lockdown. Lord, whether that's because of loneliness or for other reasons, Lord, we know that actually you are the source of comfort. And we pray that you would just show your love to those people who are struggling at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And lastly, Lord, we lift up um, our community here at St Alphage Cecil to Lord. Uh, and we thank you uh, for our leadership team. And we thank you particularly for the way um, that the church has gone online uh, and for the many successes um, that that has brought um, in enabling us to still be together, even though we can't physically be together at the moment. And we do pray for um, anyone involved in leadership um, as they start to make plans for church, um, being able to meet again in whatever shape or form that may look like, Lord. Um, we ask for your wisdom um, for all those people who will be making those decisions uh, in the next days and weeks. Uh, and we do ask, Lord, that you would uh, make this a success um, and that the, the sense of community of being online, Lord, would become a real physical um, community quickly again, Lord. We ask that in your name. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of, of your, your Son, Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's focus on our Father in heaven as we say the Lord's Prayer and sign it together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church. Um, 
few notices for you. Um, advance notice that we will be uh, back in church on Easter Sunday. Um, it will be for pre-bookings, so please uh, keep your eyes open for uh, details of how to sign up for those services. Um, it'll be lovely to, to see everybody again, um, and I'm really looking forward to that. On Palm Sunday, there is a combined team ministry service um, which is will be online and all the churches within the team will be involved in one way or another so uh, details of that will be published nearer the time um, we are starting a six week course uh, actually called START uh, which is for those people who want to know more about the Christian faith uh, so it's for people that either don't go to church at the moment or have uh, only been once or twice or just generally people who want to, to know more so if you fall into that category or you know anyone that does um, please watch out for those uh, notices they will be published on the East card that's being distributed to every house in the parish um, but obviously if you live outside the parish uh, then it will be in the notices or if you don't get those just please uh, contact myself or Ali and we'll make sure you get um, details sent through to you and the other really encouraging bit is the plans for uh, getting together with all the youth ministry work uh, and children's ministry are well underway so we wish them all the best of luck when we can all get back together again and uh, the children can have a great deal of fun uh, with their groups etc. Okay, well have a lovely week and uh, look forward to seeing you um, at Easter Sunday. It doesn't seem to be that far away now, so um, happy days. Thanks. Lord, as we light this candle today, we give thanks for mothers. We give thanks for mothers who are our biological mothers or those who have loved and cared for us. We give thanks for those who have been spiritual mothers to us. Lord, we also acknowledge that not everybody's experience of motherhood has been a positive one. And so... In this time, we also pray for those who have been damaged by motherhood. In the silence that follows now, bring your own heart prayers to God. Lord, we know that you hear us when we pray. Pour out your joy, your love, your healing and your peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everlasting, 
your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all things. My heart and my soul, I'll give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the as women, as mothers, as leaders, as friends, as counsellors, as all that you have made us. And we thank you that your love holds and surrounds us. Amen. and 
grace, my guardian, all my hopes and fears are in your hand. I'm in your hand. Where you go, I'll go. Show me the way. Every step I take, be now my guide. God on my side. You go before me. You're there beside me. And if I wander, love will find me. Goodness and mercy will always follow. You go before me, my guardian. When I hear you say, trust and obey, I will walk by faith and not by sight. God of my life. So let your kingdom come, your will be done. All your promises will stand forever. Your mighty defender, you go before me. You're there beside me, and if I wander, love will find me. Goodness and mercy will always fall. You go before me, my guardian. You are God, a great defender, strong in love, forever faithful. We are yours, and we will trust in you. A great defender, strong in love, forever faithful. We are yours, we will trust in you. You go before me, you're there beside me, and if I wonder, love will find. And mercy will always follow. You go before me, my guardian. You go before me, you're there beside me. And if I wonder, Find me goodness and mercy will always follow. You go before me, my guardian, my guardian, my guardian. We're coming to the end of our time together now. I hope that you found this service helpful and you've been able to connect with God through it. We're looking forward to opening up again for gathered worship from Easter Sunday. And we will still offer something online even when we do that. So it'll either be a live stream or pre-recorded as things develop and the lockdown eases. So God bless you. Have a great week. We're going to finish by sharing in these sentences together. Jesus, Lord of time, hold us in your eternity. Jesus, image of God, travel with us the life of faith. Jesus, friend of sinners, 
heal the brokenness of our world. Jesus, Lord of tomorrow, draw us into your future. Amen.